Warmest greetings to all my incredible subscribers and new viewers alike. Welcome to another exciting video where we'll be shedding light on Oxus God. Oxus Fax Axo was an ancient Eastern Iranian god regarded as the divine representation of the Amu Doria. In Bactria he was also considered the king of the gods. Multiple different depictions of him are known from ancient Central Asian art. On an altar from his temple discovered intact Isengen, he is depicted in the form of the Greek river god Marcius, presumably introduced by soldiers and settlers who arrived in this area during the reigns of Alexander the Great and the Seleucids. In Cushion art, he was instead depicted as a Poseidon-like figure holding a staff and a fish. In Sogdian art, he might have been depicted either as a horse or as a figure seated on a throne with horse protums, though this proposal remains a matter of debate. The earliest evidence for the worship of Oxus comes from Bactria from the Achaemenid period. He remained a popular deity in this area up to the Muslim conquest of Transoxiana. He was also worshipped in nearby Sogdia and Chorasmia. According to Al-Biruni, he was still venerated in the last of these areas in the 10th century. As we venture forward, let's examine name and character in detail and gain a deeper appreciation for its significance. It is presumed that Oxus' name is derived from the Iranian root wax, grow, leap. The Romanized form Oxus reflects the Greek form of the name, while in Bactrian the god was known as Fax. On a unique coin of the Kushan King Havisha, the former Axo Axo has been identified. Oxus was considered the divine representation of the river he shared his name with, the modern Amu Doria. It has been suggested that he was additionally associated with the entire hydrographic system of the areas he was worshipped in, including lakes, canals, and rain clouds. In Bactria, Oxus was regarded as the main deity of the local pantheon or at least as one of its most important members. He could be referred to as the Lord of the World, also translated as the One God or the King of the Gods, though the latter title was also applied to Mithra and the poorly known deity Kamad, which might indicate that multiple local traditions focused on devotion to specific gods existed in individual regions or cities in Bactria, similarly as in Sogia. The high status of Oxus among Eastern Iranian peoples in Central Asia according to Michael Schenker might explain why Anahita, who was also associated with water, never reached a comparable importance in this region as she did in the West, despite being introduced to Bactria by the Sassanian dynasty. Henry Paul Frankfurt also voiced support for the view that the high status of Oxus might be responsible for the scarcity of references to Anahita in the East. Now, let's redirect our focus towards disputed proposals and discover its significance in our narrative. Identification between Oxus and the deities and has been proposed. However, based on a legend about the latter recorded by the Chinese pilgrim Yuan Zhang, in which he is described as a mountain deity who arrived from afar, it has been alternatively suggested that he was an alternate name of Mipra rather than Oxus, as he is linked with Mount Ha in the Avesta. Henry Paul Frankfort has suggested that Oxus was a female deity at various point in time identified with Cybele, Artemis and Aphrodite. Furthermore, he derives the Cushion Thunim Ardoxo from Oxus' name. This proposal has been criticized as baseless by Michael Schinker, who points out that only certain depictions of Oxus indicate he was regarded as a male deity, and that based on Cushion sources Ardoxo was a distinct deity from him. Her name is typically interpreted as the good Ashi, rather than as the righteous Oxus, as suggested by Frankfurt. While Mary Boyce and Franz Grenit described Oxus as a Yazata in the Urs, more recently other authors, including Michael Schenker and Sun Wujin, have characterized him as a deity who despite his Iranian origin did not belong to Zoroastrian tradition. This view has been adopted by Grenit himself as well. With our curiosity piqued, let's embark on a dedicated exploration of iconography and its fascinating intricacies. The iconography of Oxus was not consistent across different time periods. The earliest known representation of this god is a statuette from a temple dedicated to him excavated in Takht Isandin in Tajikistan, which depicts him in the form of Greek Marsias. 
most likely Oxus was originally identified as a counterpart of Marcia's Bionian Greeks who arrived in Central Asia as members of Alexander the Great's armies partaking in his Indian campaign. It has also been noted that many settlers from Magnesia, where Marcias was popular as a river deity due to his association with the namesake tributary of Mayanda, arrived in the east in Seleucid times. The identification between the two river gods was presumably accepted by the population of the Greco-Bactrian kingdom. It has additionally been suggested that Hellenistic depictions of an Ictisant-alike hybrid nymph from the tact Isandian might represent a companion of Oxus. In later Kushan art, which reflected the development of a new style combining local Hellenistic Bactrian elements with Indian influences, Oxus' appearance might have been patterned on the depictions of Poseidon on the coins of Indo-Scythian King Maus, and on a coin of Havish he appears as a bearded man holding a stuff perhaps a trident and a fish. While due to Oxus' popularity in Sogdia it is presumed that representations of him can be found in Sogdian art, no work of art from this region has been identified as a representation of him with certainty yet. Michael Schenker suggests that he might have been represented in a zoomorphic form as a horse. He notes that a horse with streams of water and fish beneath its hooves depicted on the Miho funerary couch might be an example of this convention. He states that if the interpretation of the horse as Oxus' symbolic animal is accepted, it is also possible to tentatively identify him as the anthropomorphic deity seated on a throne supported by horse protums, known from paintings from Panjikant, Bunjikit and Dr. Ino Sherwin. However, the association between horses depicted in Sodian funerary art with Oxus has been questioned by Sun Wujin. He argues that it is implausible that Oxus would be depicted in Sinusodian art at all, and points out he was seemingly chiefly worshipped on the banks of Amudaria. He instead suggests that horses depicted in Sinusodian Aswaris are to be understood as a symbolic representation of animal sacrifices meant for the deceased. He argues a funerary horse sacrifice might have been understood as a way to provide the souls of Sodian nobles with a way to reach the afterlife. It has additionally been proposed that Triton-like figure depicted on sacred grave goods from Tilyatip and on Indo-Greek coin of Hippostratus can be identified as Oxus. Turning our focus to worship, let's explore its key elements. Michael Schenker suggests that the worship of Oxus might have started in prehistory, and that he could have been already been worshipped by temples belonging to the Bactrium Argena archaeological complex excavated in Dinadip and Toglaluk, though he stresses that due to lack of textual sources this proposal must remain speculative. As we progress through this video, let's shift our attention towards in Bactria and uncover its hidden depths. The earliest textual evidence of the worship of Oxus, dated to the Achaemenid period, are personal names attested in Aramaic texts from Bactria from the 4th century BCE, such as Baxu Banaka, slave of Oxus or servant of Oxus, Baxu data created by Oxus and Vaxu Obra data given by the clouds of Oxus. Further examples occur in Hellenistic sources, for example Oxybuzus, strong through Oxus, Oxidates given by Oxus, Mithros, Mithra and Oxus and possibly Oxyotis if the translation protected by Oxus is accepted. Intact Isandian a temple dedicated to Oxus has been discovered. According to a number of Muslim geographers from the 9th and 10th centuries, this area was customarily considered the beginning of Jehan Oxus which might constitute a survival of an originally Bactrian tradition responsible for the selection of this location as a cult center of the related river god. Excavations indicate that the temple was originally founded in the early Seleucid period and remained in use until the reign of the Kushan King Havisha. One of the objects from this site is a stone altar following Greek artistic conventions inscribed with the dedication of a certain Atrosokes to Oxus. His name is Bactrian and can be translated as burning with sacred fire, and it is possible that he was a priest. Further excavations revealed three more similar Greek inscriptions, seemingly left behind by Bactrian worshippers of Oxus. A seal with a human-headed bull from the Oxus treasure is inscribed with Oxus' name written in the Aramaic script. 
it has been pointed out that the objects found in the temple of Oxus intact Isangen have close parallels among these belonging to the Oxus treasure, which might indicate the latter was originally found in the same location. It has been suggested that priests of Oxus hid a number of objects out of fear of looting during a period of increased activity of the Yui in the second half of the 2nd century BCE, but failed to recover them leaving the Oxus treasure to only be discovered some 2,000 years later. Henry Paul Frankfort has suggested that the temple with indented niches discovered in Iconau might also have been a Bactrian sanctuary of Oxus. Since Oxus is not mentioned in the Robotic inscription, he was most likely not worshipped by Cushion rulers who arrived in Bactria from the north though it is nonetheless presumed he remained popular among the Bactrians even at the time of the Muslim conquest of Transoxiana. He is still frequently referenced in legal texts from the 7th and 8th centuries. As we enter this new chapter, let's navigate the complexities of Insodia and unravel its multifaceted nature. Oxus was also a popular deity in Sogdia, as indicated by a large number of theophoric names invoking him. If the interpretation of the Topani Nufon as Temple of Oxus is accepted, a sanctuary dedicated to him might have existed in the proximity of Samarkand. Next to Nona, he was the deity most commonly worshipped by Sodian merchants whose inscriptions have been discovered in the proximity of the Indus River. A reference to the worship of Oxus among the Sodians might also be present in Yuyang Zozu, a Chinese source from the Tang period, which mentions a temple in Kobodian. Judy Jungu dedicated to a deity imagined to take the form of a golden horse, who purportedly could be seen floating in the Oxus River on Nauz. While the temple dedicated to Oxus located in Takt Isangin was already abandoned at this time, it is nonetheless possible that this account documents the survival of traditions originally associated with it. Let's now zoom in on other attestations and uncover the hidden gems that lie within. In addition to being a popular deity in Bactria and Sodia, Oxus was also worshipped in Chorasmia. According to Alberuni, a festival known as Wokingam was still held in the honour of Wok, the angel who has the watch over the water, and especially over the river Oxus in this area in the 10th century. No evidence exists for any form of worship of Oxus by Western Iranian peoples. Mary Boyce and Franz Grenit, however, point out that his veneration in the East can be considered a phenomenon analogous with the cults of the local rivers documented in the Persepolis Fortification Archive, and additionally suggest that in Sassanian times the corresponding river was identified as Vanfidatia, where Zoroaster, according to tradition, received a revelation. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you in the next video.